The following is a lecture given by His Holiness Jaya Pataka Swami on September 20th, 1983 in Atlanta, Georgia. The lecture is about Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Regarding Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was trying to always obtain a transfer near to Navadip Mayapur. Then, to his great rejoicing, he obtained a transfer to Krishna Nagar, 25 miles from Navadip Mayapur. One station at a place near Navadvipa, he did not let a single free moment pass without visiting the land of Navadvipa. He had once made inquiries about the exact whereabouts of the different places of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. He soon discovered that the then city of Navadip was a town of only a hundred years standing, so he was curious to locate the actual birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. He was convinced that the town of Navadvipa was not the authentic location. He at once commenced a vigorous inquiry to find the truth of the matter but he could not easily escape from the people who tried to make him believe that the birthplace of Chaitanya was in that town. Then after careful inquiry he was told that the site was lost under the shifting course of the Ganges. Not satisfied with this explanation, he himself set out to discover the Yoga Pita birthplace. After great difficulties he came to know of a place which was being adored by many realized souls as a true birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and which was then in the possession of the Muhammadans. Local inquiry and corroborative evidence from ancient maps of the latter part of the 18th century showed the name Sri Mayapur at last helped him to discover the real site of the birthplace. The discovery led to the publishing of a valuable book work called Navadvip Dhamma Mahatmya. Chapter 5 of this book has appeared in Iskand's Bengali Back to Godhead magazine. I'm translating that. The year 1895 was the most eventful year in the history of the Vaishnava world, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the prime mover of the events. It was in this year that he officially memorialized the birth site of Sri Chaitanya and brought its true identity and importance before the public eye. Thousands of visitors were present at, fun at a function held at the spot. Then it describes how Bhaktivinoda Thakur used to go door to door raising subscriptions to build a Gaur Vishnu Priya temple in Mayapur. The work of preaching the holy name was also in full swing and it spread fast into the distant corners of the globe. The Gauranga Smorana Mangala Stotra with a preface in English containing the life and precepts of Sri Chaitanya came out from Bhaktivinoda's pen soon after the discovery of Lord Chaitanya's birthplace and found its place in all the learned institutions of both hemispheres. The more the names of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Krishna were preached, the merrier was Thakur Bhaktivinoda. He thereafter made annotations of Sri Brahma Sanghita and Sri Krishna Karna Rita and gave to the world his immortal and precious work, the precious work Sri Hari Nama Chintamani and Bhajana Rahasya. Many books he did in addition, over a hundred. <clears throat> it was in the beginning of the 20th century that he chose to live at Puri and build a house on the beachfront there. Many honest souls sought his blessings and readily obtained them when he accepted the renounced order of life. Though he was leading the life of a renounced soul, he could not avoid the men of all description who constantly visited him. All of them received oceans of spiritual training, instructions, and blessings. In 1910, he shut himself up and remained in a perfect state of samadhi or full concentration on the eternal pastimes of the Lord. We have that place where they mentioned he spent his last time at Puri. 
just next to the Samadhi of Haridash Thakur. Tomorrow is the disappearance of Haridash Thakur. Any questions? Chaitanya Bhagavat. Yeah. Was rebound by Nityananda Prabhu when he was going apart with him, leaving him, traveling. about the early life of Lord Chaitanya. The Adi Madhya and Antya Lila. Adi Lila means up to the point where Lord Chaitanya manifested his ecstasies. Madhya Lila is in Navadip up to the point he took sannyas. And Antya Lila, which is very short, is his whole sannyas Lila. So just like in the Chaitanya Charamita Adi Lila, what is here Adi and Madhya is all fit within Adi Lila. And, and then it doesn't cover much about Lord Chaitanya's latter life in here. So that's covered in Chaitanya Charamita. Chaitanya Charamita is more philosophical. This is a little more past times. But the purports are quite philosophical, but the verses itself are. Who's writing the purports? Bhakti Siddhanta? Bhakti Siddhanta. Bhakti Siddhanta. Part of it was by Bhakti, you know. Kali Yuga Pavana Sampradaya Sanraksha Prabhavar. Om Vishnu Pachi Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasadi Goswami Thakur Sri Sarupa Rupa Virodhi Shakala Kushi Danto Nirasho Pur Gauriya Vasha Evan It's just mentioned uh, written by Vrindavan Das Thakur and Playing by Bhakti Siddhanta. I've heard that the, purple, the introductions of each chapter were by Bhakti Dinod, but I might be mistaken, it doesn't mention. All right, what would you like to hear about? When you read it like that, it's a bit slow. You know, like if you read Chaitanya Charanamita, each verse is long purport. To get a whole pastime, you have to read a chapter. So that way, just to take it at random. You don't speak. I normally read a chapter and then tell the whole pastime. <laughs> How's our friend doing? Everything's every time. Chanting Hare Krishna? You still jolly? Yeah. I'm always happy. We want you, we should always stay happy. 
that's possible by chanting Hare Krishna. That was the past time how Lord Nityananda left his house. Aila sanyasi stane nita nando pisa nyasi re dilen putra noai yamata nityananda sange choli lena nyasi bor heno moti nita nanda chari lena go Nityananda's father took Lord Nityananda to the sanyasi gave his son to the sannyasi. Nityananda went with that sannyasi at that time. In this way, uh, Lord Nityananda left his house. Nityananda gave a matra haraya pundit bhumite purila viprahaya murchit As soon as Lord Nityananda left his house, immediately haraya pundit fell to the ground unconscious. Jaybi lapa khandan kori bo kon jane kohi bo kori bo kon jane vidhore pashana kashto tahara shtabone How he was lamenting and crying. Who can express that? It was so intense that even uh, a person made out of uh, wood would uh, melt or burn just by hearing it. <laughs> Who? Nityananda went with the sannyasi when he was 12. Sannyasi came to his father's house and the father received him because he stay overnight. They discussed about Krishna Kautat late into the night and the next morning gave him that request to take a little prasad before he goes. Then they asked him if there's anything he'd like. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, there's just one thing, but I don't know if I should ask. Said, no, no, whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> you sure that he wants to give it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Like that, Sanyasi kept apologizing. But then finally he said, no, no, please, you must tell me. Whatever you want to give. Give me your son. <laughs> Give me Nityananda. Actually, how I found it, to give Nityananda meant it took his life. Because Nityananda was worth more than his life. But he was afraid that if I don't give, then I'll teach my son to lie. That might, the Brahmana that might abandon his structure. Even his giving was also out of attachment to the other people. Oh, thank you, sir. How many questions tonight? <clears throat> I was just going to ask for some followed by the tell a story without following. Because today is Bhakti Vino Thakur's appearance day. I don't know Bhakti Vino. Bhakti Vino Thakur, he was in his writings we find in his informal newspaper. He had two newspapers, one like Iskan World Review, which he would write down all the news about the preaching. Another newspaper which was less frequently printed, which was a, just for devotees discussing philosophical subject matter, which had a, relative, a relation to the preaching. 
So, I'm going to tell you Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he was going in a Namha preaching program and he went to one village the next, the next like that, drinking a party of Sankirtan, Harinam chanting. And he wrote that how when he went by a primary school and all the kids were sitting there with the slates and the chalks and they were A, B, C, D, Bengali, O, A, U, U, E, E. Bengali, O, A, U, U, E, E. Don't know? No. She's doing all their academic studies, but when Bhakti Vino Thakur went by, when the Sankirtan party went by, then he saw that all the children jumped up from their studies and looked. They all ran out, running to join the Sankirtan. Bhaktivinoda Thakur saw their spontaneous attraction. He was completely overwhelmed with joy and with ecstasy. Just simple things like that, Bhaktivinoda Thakur took it very significantly. Here's some school children, but they were spontaneously attracted to Krishna. There's no difference between Krishna and his holy name. Chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Krishna's holy name is not different, and Krishna himself is not different. So being as spontaneously attracted to the chanting of Hare Krishna is a very good sign. Even there were kids, they might have contributed to so many things, but because it was Krishna, they get the same benefit. And to hear the chanting of Hare Krishna, Spontaneously, that anyone's mind is attracted. If they even think something pleasant, then for that they get special benediction. You know, Thakur, at his house, he made a little hut for Gorkishore Das Babaji to reside. Many devotees have seen that, just by the side of his samadhi. Just a little grass hut, there's still some like a cave type of setup. Gorkishore Das Babaji used to sit there and he would take his prashad out of an empty, dried human skull. You like? Oh, I'm just with the skull, don't worry. You know why he did that? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's true. Why? <laughs> why do you think? Uh huh. Why do I think he did that? Yeah. Why do you use the shot out? Out of an empty skull? Skull. Well, you can relate a skull to a lot of, a skull is a symbol of a lot of earthly things, but you can, you can relate it, you know, but I'm not going to try, I'm going to let you tell me, I'm going to be done. <laughs> Actually, it's a typographic reminder about the temporal nature of the body. And how actually we're not this body, we're pure spirit soul. And that we're meant to serve Krishna, not to serve the body, which is just going to be a skeleton in no time. Or ashes or the or worms. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he liked to discuss Krishna Kotha. He would sometimes discuss with in his uh, room, he had, in the 1800s, he had a, uh, a fan. At that time, I don't think electricity was available yet. So the fan in his room was kerosene fan, run by a flame. It's still there in his room, although nobody runs it anymore, but it's quite unique. Mm. There were a lot of things in it. Now they don't let the devotees in his room so much because a lot of devotees sniffed at the things. There were a lot of uh, 
relics in his room. So he used to visit all the sacred places of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. And one of his songs he said, just by drinking the water, when will I be satisfied? Just drinking the water of the Jalangi of the Saraswati River going to Mayapur and taking some simple rice pushana. When will I see all the residents of the uh, Gaur Mangal Bhumi with uh, four arms? Sometimes uh, Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur would uh, face certain manipulators and mayavadis. He would defeat them very strongly. With his family, he used to tell them that uh, his children, if you don't, once you grow up and you go out that's, and you're self-dependent, you can do what you want. But so long as I'm feeding you, you better do what I say, otherwise I won't feed you. You have to help me in my service to Krishna. Something like that. Don't say it's the exact quote, but something to that effect. He compelled everyone to help him in his translation and printing of all the books of Krishna that he had done. Of course, we all did it out of love. I went with Srila Prabhupada two or three occasions to the birthplace of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Prabhupada was trying to get that for his country to develop and do some service to Bhaktivinoda Thakur. It's about 20 miles from Mayapur. Dear Nagar, beautiful place. All around this uh, mango orchard, Bhaktivino Thakur said it's an extension of Godrum Dweep, of the extension of the land of cows and trees of Navadweep. So we're trying, we tried, I haven't been there for hours. People had asked me to go frequently, occasionally, if I can help them to encourage them to let us develop some. Srila Prabhupada had a bit of an argument with some of the people there who wouldn't develop the place, couldn't develop the place. Yet uh, when Prabhupada offered to develop it, they wouldn't allow him. So Prabhupada, one time he was telling different people that isn't this sinful? But here is an uh, important uh, place to be developed for Krishna. You can do it, you won't do it. And then someone who wants to do it, who can't do it, but someone who wants to do it, you won't allow him to do it. Subsequently, Prabhupada requested me to donate something there, just as a donation without any condition. Seven days while he was in this world. So later I gave a donation there and then they used it finally. Maybe sometime in the future we can, by Prabhupada's mercy, develop uh, that place also. Is this his own family or another son who died? Or who's, who's actually in charge of it? It's a branch. Yeah. Another sub branch. It's from the family of Bhakti. Yes? Um, Bhakti and Bhakti have a very large family. So there's a majority. So there's some of still living and they're still caring with the movement. One was living up to about four or five years ago. Yeah, we used to But he's no longer living. Other than that, he was 103. Other than that, uh, everyone is like nephews and grand nephews. And Jadubar said he got some nice photographs from one of their descendants. I met one uh, in Medellin and he said he was 60 grandkids, Bhakti Rapati was nephew or something. He looked just like him. Everything. Yeah, he's a very nice person. Yeah. 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 I just gave initiation to Srila Prabhupada's grand niece. This Maya professor was a Gura, a Dhammasana. But they don't say 
they consider themselves to be granddaughters. Indian families are so close that the brothers live together. And so all the some other brothers they don't even they lose track even of which is their son. Because they're all children. His uh, his uh, his uh, grand niece. That means uh, his sister, his you know, right. his sister, sister's son, son's daughter. daughter. Okay. Maybe it was the straight name. Straight name. I come on, you know. The mouth is so important for the. Uh, <laughs> How come the mouth is so important for it? I mean, you know, I know it's one of the most powerful things, you know, through time, you know, speaking. I mean, you know, if you look at a lot of different, you know, religions, whatever, everything, you know, as far as material came from here, you know. And I wonder why is it, why, why was it concentrated, why was it, why was it open and so we were free? Well, originally the scriptures are spoken by God. Right. So they're considered to be the breath of the Supreme Lord. That's the Vedic truth, so everything is coming from the Vedas. And that's why the words of the scripture are considered very important in every religion. So is that why it's so important to watch what what which what what is said out your mouth? Normally trying to hear it more than watch it. I okay. <laughs> I was just uh, but uh, you know what I'm saying, is that why it's so important to be 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 wise and pick the words that you use and the things that you say? Well if you chant you see if we hear from the right source <coughs> properly, then you're going to be able to repeat or speak properly. If you don't hear from the proper source, then even you try to pick out your words and say the right thing, it doesn't, it, it won't be correct because the source is not pure. That's why one is recommended not to hear from a non-devotee but to hear only from the lips of devotees about topics about Krishna. But to hear the nectar about the Supreme Lord, you should hear from a devotee of Krishna. And then by hearing, you'll be able to repeat and to explain it. And by chanting, that will purify your mind so you can hear properly. It's a brain tune. Tuning in to the vibration. How he established it? How he described it. Describing his part of the so all the That every center for disseminating Krishna consciousness was considered to be a a storefront or a shop and the big holy place which has, which has so many temples is considered to be a marketplace. Lord Nityananda is considered to be the chief capitalist or Mahadev <laughs> and his partner, share, major shareholder partner director is uh, Advaita Gosai. Then he has different assistant directors like uh, Gadadhar, Srivas, Rupan Sanatan Goswami in Vrindavan, Gadadhar and uh, Ramananda Rai in Puri. Then uh, Srivas and 
He had the traveling salesmen, brokers, and over 20 different posts. Then he had a few extra posts, like tailors, laundrymen, and barbers. So, the commodity that you could buy in the marketplace of the Holy Name was uh, love for Krishna, pure chanting of Hare Krishna. To get that, you had to pay the price. But the price is not in the form of money, in the ordinary cash sense. But the exchange rate is that the currency is in the form of love and faith. Sradhav Bhakti, devotion. So, <clears throat> starting with faith as one cent, going up to uh, Bhav as 99 cents. And with all the other levels in between, he made the exchange rate. Sadha means uh, faith, and Baba means ecstatic devotion. There are eight other stages between that. Prema is considered to be a gold coin, similar to our Krugerrand, as compared to a dollar being ecstatic devotion. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, just like in the marketplace, anybody can buy anything if you have the money. If you have the money, you can buy a Rolls Royce in this modern market. So if you have the faith in devotion, no matter what your material situation might be, then you can purchase accordingly faith, or association of devotees, or attachment in devotion, or ecstatic devotion, or depending how much transcendental money you have accumulated. So this way Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he recognized uh, when a, in a village there was someone who would make his home into a, or there would be a group that would meet in different people's homes. He, recognize them as a Namhata branch or Prapanasha. And then he told them they should go out every morning with a flag and chant Hare Krishna at least in five people's houses, requesting them, Dear Sir, please sing of Hare Krishna and lead a holy life. Like a point of five with a flag. And then coming and doing Naga Kirtan, Hare Nam in the street. And this way, Huh? Not, not my flag. Oh, yeah, I haven't found it. <laughs> Little flag. I have to go carrying a flag. Door to door, thank you, Tom. 